Hello boys and girls and welcome to the last day of Vacation Bible School. I've been uh, your guide, Moses, and I know you've enjoyed the stories that Miss Carol Leggins has been sharing as she's played the role of Miriam, my sister. She's a wonderful storyteller and I just really enjoy listening to her wonderful stories. We hope you've been uh, listening to the music uh, that we've provided as well and the DVD, and that's yours to keep as well. And I hope that you've been enjoying the things, uh, and bringing it home, the things that you and your family can do together. And also, I hope you'll go back and read over and over the letters that have come from Moses to you. They encourage you to remember that God loves you and that God is always with you. Today, our Bible verse is from Psalm 16 and 7. I will bless the Lord who guides me. And so we see God guides us, so we are to trust God. Today is our last day together, so I just wanted to make sure that you understood the themes of each and every day. God is with us was the first day. God gives us what we need the second day. The third day is God gives us strength. And then God saves us and guides us. And, and with all the sounds, all of it sounds so wonderful, but don't forget the most important part. Remember, trust God. In order for him to guide and save us and provide for us, we have to trust God. So trust God. Bye. We love you here at Myrtle Grove United Methodist Church. And Miss Janet, who is our educational director, her and Miss Barbara and other helpers put all of this together. So we're so thankful for Miss Janet and for Barbara and for all who helped put the packs together and get this information out to y'all for Miss Carol Leggins, uh, who shared our story each and every day. Uh, and for Miss Patty Kane, who did the stage decorations that you see here as well. So we're grateful for all these people. And we're gonna to finish today with Miss Janet, our education director, who has a few words just for you. Hello, boys and girls. This is our last day together. I'm gonna to be so sad, but it has been wonderful knowing that you're learning about the wilderness escape here at Myrtle Grove United Methodist Church on our virtual VBS. I hope you've enjoyed the stories. I hope you'll always be able to remember and tell other people about my brother Moses and what a difference he made for our people of God as we learned all the different steps that God was willing to teach us. That he provides for our needs, that he is there to give us strength. And today's part is that he will guide us. God guides us so we should trust God. Now after we finally escaped, our story yesterday explained how we got out of Egypt by um, Pharaoh finally being interested in listening after the terrible plagues that came to Egypt. And so we crossed the Red Sea, and now we spent the next 40 years wandering in the wilderness, trying to find our way safely. There's a lot of things that happened. It wasn't individually my fault, but others, um, people who did not listen to Moses and did not obey God. And the punishment for that was, instead of going straight in to the Promised Land while I was still living, it was years later before others, my descendants, were able to actually travel into the Promised Land. But while we were wandering in the wilderness, we went back to Mount Sinai. And Mount Sinai is the mountain where Moses was taking care of his sheep when this burning bush first spoke to him, the bush that didn't burn up. And God said, take off your shoes, you're in a holy place. And Moses is thinking, what is going on? And that's where he told Moses, I'm sending you back to Egypt. I need you to meet your brother Aaron, who will help to speak for you, and your sister Miriam, and you need to bring my people, all two million of them, safely out of Egypt. And so we're back at Mount Sinai, and suddenly Moses disappears. Now, I'm glad to say he at least spoke to Aaron and I and said, you know, I have been called by God to the top of the mountain, I'll be back in a few days. And so make camp here and keep everybody on track, which they didn't do a very good job of that while he was gone, but that's another whole story that maybe someday you'll hear in Bible school. Moses left and went to the top of the mountain, and God was waiting for him there. Now you have to understand, 
God didn't talk to Moses like you and I are talking face to face. If he had, he would have died. Nobody sees the glory of God and survives. But because Moses was such a faithful servant to God, he told him that he could be in the cleft of a rock and that God would protect him as the, the magnificence of his glory went by. And it caused him to have a shining face. He had to wear a veil when he came back down because he was just glowing with the wonder of God. But while he was up on that mountain, God said, okay, we're getting ready finally for the people to go into the promised land. And they need to follow some rules. I know what you're thinking. Nobody likes rules. I'm sure your parents have rules. What time you have to go to bed, when you have to pick up your toys, dinner table rules. And there are safety rules that we all follow, not, dri not driving too fast, nothing, no problems by not wearing a seatbelt. Think of all the rules in our life that are intended to keep us safe. And that's what God's rules were too. They were to keep us safe. And so Moses comes down carrying these two beautiful tablets. This is just a miniature version of what those tablets might have looked like. And on these tablets were, we call them the Big Ten, the ten most important rules that if we let God guide us, we can trust him. And these will give us a safe and happy life. And so Moses comes down off the mountain carrying these tablets. And of course the people are all upset because he's been gone so long and where have you been and, and what are these rules you want to teach us? We're tired of having rules. I mean, the Egyptians forced us to do everything their way for so long. Now we just want to be free. And Moses said, God's plan is to guide you, and you have to trust God. So then he proceeded to tell them about these ten rules. And I'm going to explain them to you. The first one is talking about, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. Now, you have to understand, we were living in a, in a climate and a culture that worship gods for everything. There was a God of the sea, and a God of the sun, and a God of the stars, and a God of the moon. Nobody believed that there could be one super being, a supreme heavenly father, who would provide everything, create everything, and take care of everything. And so they had gods of this and that and the other. So the rule number one is we, as Christians, as believers, know there is only one God, the one true God, and we should worship him. The second rule is you shall not make any graven images. All these countries that worshiped other gods, they built statues to them. And you would bring flowers or plants or things and bow down and burn incense and, and do all these things worshiping a stick and an Asherod pole or worshiping these faults. That's what they were, faults, meaning they're fake. They're not real. Our God is not fake. He is completely real. And so we should honor him only. We don't even worship a cross. We just use a cross to remind us of the sacrifice that Christ made for us. And that's okay. We don't bow down to it or burn incense to it or any of those things. The third commandment was you shouldn't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Have you ever heard anybody lose their temper and use God's name as part of cursing or hollering or they're upset and they're mad? And you should never use God's name that way. We should always honor and say, God bless you. We say that when somebody sneezes because we want you to be blessed and to protect you and so on. And if you're in a, a bad situation and you holler, help me Lord, that's really a prayer. You're really asking for God's help. You're not using his name in a bad way, but people do it all the time. And the third commandment is you should not do that. The fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Remember the story of the manna. You were only supposed to pick up one day's manna or it would rot and get worms in it and be awful, except getting ready for the Sabbath. Because on the Sabbath day, it was a special holy day. You should keep it holy by not working, by resting, by meeting with God and praying. That's why we go to church on Sunday. That's our Sabbath day, it's Sunday. And you, those of you who go to Sunday school and so forth, you, you have an opportunity to be especially close to God that day. And so this was a way for us to remember that the Sabbath day is special and could be set apart. So those are the four commandments that pertain to God. The rest of the commandments pertain to other people because Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So the ways that we show love toward other people, human beings, 
are the rest of these commandments, and they're much shorter and quicker. Number five, honor your father and your mother. You need to respect your parents. You need to obey them when they tell you to do something. This is extremely important. And as children, I hope you're always mindful and grateful for how much your mom and dad love you and how much they will take care of you, or your grandparents if that's who's taking care of you, or aunts or uncles, or lots of children are in different situations, but whoever is watching out for you, you need to respect them. Number six, you shouldn't kill. Now by this we mean killing as in murder. When somebody gets really angry and they want to punish another person, they might murder them, and that is not a good thing. And God said from the beginning, you must never lose your temper and take the life of another person. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. And adultery is when you're not faithful to your husband or your wife. So when you say, I do in marriage, they, God asks that you stay true to that. There are situations and circumstances that change that, but for the most part, you're promising to be true with God to this other person. Um, number eight is you shall not steal. You all know you're not supposed to take things that aren't yours. There's no question about that, no matter how much you want it. So not stealing was very important to God, and he has taught that as one of the basic rules that will keep us safe and happy. Number nine, do not bear false witness. You know what this means? Don't tell lies. A lot of times we, oh, we're going to get in trouble. Maybe if I make up a story, I won't get in trouble. That's never a good thing. Honesty is always the best policy. I know you've heard that before. So be honest. Always tell the truth. And God wants to know. His, his word, this book, is complete truth. And so because he believes and has given us this word of truth, we need to always use truth in our lives. And finally, number 10, you shall not covet. Now, covet is when you want something that somebody else has. Now, okay, your best friend gets a new scooter and you think it's the coolest thing you've ever seen, that's fine. But you're not going to be just thinking about it all the time and miserable all the time and complaining all the time because you don't have a scooter just like that and you're not going to plot a way to steal his scooter. Because we already talked about stealing as being a bad thing. So we need to be very mindful that God wants to guide us in our lives and keep us safe and happy. And if we follow these commandments, we will have a happy life. There's only 10. Surely we can remember the big 10 and, and make God proud because God guides us. And we need to trust him because he's always there. He loves us and he would never do anything. Our final scripture verse comes from Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Look every day for ways that you can see that God has been in your life guiding you and leading you and protecting you and providing for your needs and giving you strength. All the things that we've talked about this week are ways that God, he's there for you. You are so special to him. He created you and loves you every single day. And if you will just give your heart to Jesus, his son, and live the kind of life that makes God proud and happy. It will just be so much easier to go through life this way. We've escaped the wilderness. Moses did not get to cross into the promised land, but the rest of, of the people did. Joshua led them, and then led them once they were in their new home. And I hope you've been led this week to trust God with everything. And we have enjoyed having you here with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this week, the opportunity to talk to these boys and girls, even if it's over a computer. And I hope their hearts have been touched by the stories that we have shared. As Miriam, I have been blessed myself to share about my wonderful brother Moses, who was a servant of God and willing to do all that God asked him to do. In the rest of the summer, and as these children prepare for school in whatever form that is going to take, we ask you to bless them, Father, and watch over them and protect them and their families. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of being together here. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. I'm so glad you came back today. Now, remember we did Moses parting the Red Sea. We have the quail and the manna page. And we did Moses with his camel. And then yesterday we did the Ten Plagues of Egypt. So, you see me do all of those. Today we're going to do a book on the Ten Commandments. 
and it's a little bit fun to do too, I think. You have color pages that goes through all the different Ten Commandments. You can color those before you start or you can color them after you put your book together, okay? You will find in your kit a piece of foam like this and I'm going to show you how easy it is to pop these little suckers out there. You can just pop them right out like that or if they don't want to pop out, get your pencil point and just push them out. They will open up for you, okay? This is the outside of your book. And you take your inside of the book, make sure all your holes line up. And it's pretty easy to do this. And then fold over and all those holes should just be right there. You got a nice thread to start. Make sure I'm doing the top part of it. Okay. You just are going to go over and under and just pull your not cooperate there we go give it a little tug if it, if it doesn't want to cooperate you might have to do it this way there we go there we go and go to the back to the front If you're not careful, you'll have yourself in knots. So you gotta watch what you're doing just a little bit. Okay, see it like that. If you want yours to look like this, you come back up through the bottom again and it will make the X mark for you see how that did and it will just be as cute as it can be come on go through the pages there we go and you can just go all the way back up and it leaves you a nice little X mark on the back of your binder I'm not going to do all of that I showed you how to do it, now you can do that part. On the front of this, you will see that it has Moses. He's a sticker, foam sticker. You just have to get him started. There you go. And he didn't peel all the way. He's going to be all right without it. You see exactly where I put him, front and center, just like that, okay? Then you will find the words, the Ten Commandments. Let's peel the back off of them. Put them anywhere on this page you want to because this is your book. I'm putting mine kind of like that, but you can do yours at the bottom of your page if you want to. And that sticky stuff is sticky, it doesn't want to let go of you sometimes. Then you'll find a little gray piece of foam that has your Ten Commandments. I'm a stickler for putting things in the order they're supposed to be, so I'm putting the commandments left to right. The first five are going on the left side. <laughs> the second five are going on the right. But that's me. And this is my craft. You do your craft, whichever order you want them. And there you go. Just like that. Now, in your kit, they have two crosses. And I always like to put crosses on my crafts whenever I can. 
I'm not sure exactly where to put them in conjunction with the story of the Ten Commandments, but I decided I kind of liked it on the front and on inside cover. Like that. And then on the very, very back, that's where I put mine. You will find if you color your pages before you get started that it will work out better because if you wait till you get all your stickers on it, it's going to affect the way your page works. And there you go. Just like this one. So I hope y'all enjoy your craft today. It's been a wonderful thing sharing with you. Have a great summer. Hi guys, it's Miss Janet again. I know you had a really good time this week and heard a lot of new stories and learned an awful lot about Moses and the Israelites. I hope some stuff that you didn't even know before. Maybe even your parents learned a few things. So I just want to thank you for participating and to tell you that we're working very hard to get everybody back to church at Myrtle Grove Methodist. Pretty soon we're going to have the nursery and children's church running so that you can come back and enjoy children's church again. And as soon as we can, we will start Sunday school and other things. But until then, um, watch the YouTube page, Richardson Family Ministries, and you and your parents can watch the pastor and sometimes more stories from me. Thanks. Bye.